Here we introduce the concept of vorticity and the evolution of vorticity coming from the Euler equation. To explore this concept, we're going to begin by considering the Euler equation for fluid dynamics, and we're going to do some manipulations of it. We're going to start with um, d by dt of the velocity u plus the u dot grad on u, our advection term, which is equal to the gradient of pressure over some density and will include some general body force F. And this, um, we've made no incompressibility assumptions or anything else. This is valid for compressible flow, but we have neglected viscosity. So this is our, our Euler, Euler equation. Um, with, um, with, someone said to me at one point, with the malice of foresight, let's rewrite one of our terms here using a vector identity um, here from the, the Naval Research Lab plasma formulary. Um, let's, with the malice of foresight, let's recognize that u dot grad u can be cleverly rewritten as one half of the gradient of the quantity u contracted with u. This is, um, this is the scalar u squared and um, also um, then minus uh, u cross u cross quantity curl of u. This is a this is a, a vector identity. It's valid for any vectors a and b, a dot grad b. Here a and b happen to be the same thing, which leads to this nice u squared in the middle here. Okay, so what, what does this give us if we plug it back into our Euler equation? So if we rewrite our Euler momentum equation um, using this expansion for u dot grad u, so we have our same d by dt of u plus, um, let's gather our um, a one half grad u dot u, and then we've got our minus u cross del cross u, and this is all equal to the right-hand side, curl of p over rho plus f, our body force, our external body force. Okay, so we've gone and we've taken one vector term and we've turned it into two vector terms where one of them's a, a gradient on a scalar. What is what is this got? It, it looks worse. What What's this gotten for us? Um, take the curl, del cross our equation for both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Now the curl is a spatial derivative, and so um, in these sorts of systems, it, it is uh, separable from the time derivative. It propagates through that. We can interchange the two. So this is d by dt of the curl of u, all right? Um, and we also have um, the curl of um, quantity one half gradient of um, u squared, that's our contracted u on u, and then we've got the um, we've got the uh, curl of quantity u cross curl cross u, and then we've got our right hand side. We've got the um, curl of uh, grad p over rho, and we've got our f vector. Okay, um, let's, let's start with this first term on the, um, on the, on the left-hand side. Uh, this is zero because this is the curl of a gradient of a scalar, and that's zero by vector identities for any scalar in here when you take the gradient of it. That's automatically zero. So that, that already, that makes that term go away. So um, first term on the left-hand side other than the time derivative goes away. Let's consider the first term on the right-hand side. Um, right-hand side first term. This is our, um, our pressure gradient term. All right, we're gonna use a vector identity here. Um, if we have the curl of some scalar q times some vector a, 
So Q is a scalar. There's a vector identity that's handy, which is that this expands into Q times the curl of A and the gradient of Q cross the gradient of A. Okay. Oh, sorry. One, uh, doop. Uh, I've run ahead of myself. It's the um, curl of Q crossed with, uh, with A itself, because A, A is our vector. All right. Now, in this case, A is the gradient of pressure. So if we've got um, that first term on the right-hand side, this is del cross quantity 1 over rho, that's our Q, grad P vector, this is our A vector. All right, so we've got a 1 over rho uh, curl cross grad P. That again is zero by vector identities. And then we've got the um, gradient of one over rho crossed with grad of P as the remaining term. All right, what is, what is the gradient of one over rho crossed with, uh, with grad of P? Well, first of all, the gradient of one over rho, this is the minus grad rho divided by rho squared. So therefore, we have um, uh, grad cross 1 over rho grad p. That looks like minus grad rho cross grad p divided by rho squared. All right. So let's um let's let's write these terms here. Let's rewrite our Euler momentum equation with all of these. The Euler momentum equation, um, when we take the curl of it, so we can think of this as del cross on Euler, this is d by dt of del cross u. And we have um, uh, plus uh, del cross quantity u cross del cross u. Okay, we'll put a parentheses here to help us remember the order of our cross products. Um, and this whole thing is equal to the right hand side, which is minus grad rho cross grad p divided by rho squared, and then plus um, the curl of our force F. All right. So let's, let's take, this is our, this is our full form of the Euler equation when we've taken its curl. Um, and this is valid for compressible or incompressible flows. Um, let's now, let's make some identifications. Let's define a new quantity. Um, we're going to let the vector quantity omega vector be defined as the curl of u. And we call this quantity the vorticity. Um, vorticity, um, when we have lots of vorticity, um, flows with lots of vorticity are generally turbulent flows is a term that we use for them. Um, we can think of vorticity as, in a sense, the swirliness of the flow. And so the more vorticity you have, the, the more turbulent the flow is. Um, the converse of that is that if we have, um, uh, if we have little, little vorticity, then we call a flow like that laminar. Um, and that usually connotates uh, smoothness. Um, smooth flows we call laminar flows. Swirly flows we call turbulent flows. Um, a major difference between the two of them is that turbulent flows tend to have more vorticity um, and vorticity on smaller spatial scales, where laminar flows tend to have less vorticity. And we'll, we'll return to these concepts 
of laminar flows um, later, but this is a good point to introduce the nomenclature. All right, so using using this um, identity, using this definition and plugging it into the Euler equation, let's rewrite the Euler equation in terms of this new vector quantity, um, omega the vorticity. So we'll call this Euler Euler vorticity equation, um, and that equation is d by dt of the vector quantity omega. Um, I'm going to move things to the right hand side right now equals minus del cross quantity u cross omega and then uh, uh, minus uh, grad rho cross grad p over rho squared and then plus del cross our body force f. And I'll come back and I'll clean some things up here. So we have, a, we have a few different terms here. We have our time derivative changes of vorticity. Um, and the time derivative, the vorticity can change to a vector quantity. It can change um, either from flow vorticity interaction. So these are nonlinear flow vorticity interactions. This is a, a way where the um, flow itself changes the interact, it changes the vorticity. It can also change when there are gradients of density and pressure um, that are not aligned with each other. Um, this is ways that thermodynamic gradients can create vorticity. The term we use for this is baroclinicity. Um, and that's from a, an inclination of the, the um, lines of constant density and the lines of constant pressure. That's what it means to have their gradients misaligned from each other. And then also from um, just good old forcing. Our forcing itself could be um, creating vorticity if our forcing, if the forces acting are, um, are as we'll see, non-conservative if those forces have a curl to them. This is the um, the equation that governs the evolution of vorticity um, if we do not have viscosity present in our system, if we have um, ideal fluid dynamics under the Euler momentum equation.